All right, welcome to the first of its kind, World Changing Manufacturers Network. Lisa Ryan has her ears to the ground and her heart in the game. Get ongoing education and new connections right here with Lisa and the Manufacturers Network. Buckle your seat, listen, and spread the word. Here's Lisa. Hey, it's Lisa Ryan. Welcome to the Manufacturers Network podcast. My guest today is Rick Winter. Rick is VP of Sales and Marketing at SNC Manufacturing. Rick began his manufacturing career at a very early age. During summers after high school, Rick worked in a paper mill to pay for college. And after graduating college with a BBA in marketing, Rick worked for Polaroid. He moved on to a company that specialized in custom extruded aluminum components for the telecom industry, and he now works for SNC Manufacturing, a leading custom transformer manufacturer of single-phase and three-phase industrial control transformers, which has manufacturing facilities in Oshkosh, Mexico, and China. Rick, welcome to the show. Thanks, Lisa. So, Rick, share with us a little bit about your background. What attracted you to manufacturing and really what's what's kept you here? Well, I guess, you know, I grew grew up in a blue collar area, mostly paper industry. My father worked in the paper mill his whole life. I worked in that paper mill in the summertime to pay for my school. So I was exposed to it early on and it was kind of the lifeblood of of my upbringing, you know, that's what pretty much everybody did in the area. And then as I moved on through my career, I worked for companies that obviously manufactured product, but started out in a different side of it. And then as I moved into, I've always enjoyed being in the factory and and seeing the production being done. So it's always, I kind of like that more of a hands-on feel to it. So it's always enabled me, I think, to be better at, you know, the front end side of the business, having a, a better understanding of what goes on behind the scenes in the plant. And so share a little bit about SNC. I know that you like being in the plant. What are some of the things that you've done there with your workplace culture of, of connecting with your employees, of engaging them? What, what helps you keep them? That was um, a challenge that I took on. I've been at SNC for five years now, but it was one of the things that I took on pretty early on was try to change the culture a little bit. So SNC, this is actually our 75th year of being in business. And we have a lot of, in Wisconsin, a lot of long-term employees. And, you know, with that just comes a lot of the traditional, historical, cultural things that, you know, have never maybe outdated in a lot of ways, but still work, but trying to just get the culture to be where people are more interactive and and trying to break down that barrier of the front office versus the factory, you know, that, and getting everybody to understand that we're more of a a team. So one of the first things that I did was we set up quarterly all hands meetings where we just talk to the employees just like they're everybody else, all the people in the factory floor. And we tell them how we're doing, what are, how we're doing against our revenue goals, our bottom line goals, and then the other initiatives that we're doing. So just getting them to feel a little bit more of an ownership and, and understanding what their stake is and making them understand that they're an important cog in this whole system. Without them, you know, we can't you know, deliver on our end. So that was one of the things. And one of the other things we started doing was getting more employee events. So like we just recently took the entire factory, we were the entire company to a local minor league baseball game. And so we do that like once a summer and, you know, they bring their families. So we'll do stuff like that. And throughout the year, we'll have events on site, you know, where we'll host dinners, we'll do barbecues where this staff will grill out, you know, and and for the employees here. So just trying to get them to feel that, let them know that we appreciate what they do and just doing some small things to where we have more interaction. And so you say it's an all hands meeting that you're having. So you're having the office staff along with the leadership team and the people in the plant? Correct. Yeah. Everybody from, you know, the owner of the company on down. So we all 
the management team will do the presentation. You know, we always will have a kind of a template that we do. It's pretty quick. We do it during the lunch hour and we'll usually bring in lunch that day for, for the employees. And, you know, whether it's, you know, food trucks or we have it catered in, but yeah, we all just kind of go through a 15, 20 minute quick little update on what's going on with the business and making sure they're informed. And a lot of times, you know, you see that there's this kind of us versus them mentality with the people in the office versus the people in the plant. So I'm assuming that this has really helped in that and developing more of those relationships. Do you have any kind of before and after what it was like before you started doing these with the, the office versus the plant people versus now that they're getting together like that on a regular basis? Yeah, they, um, so like if we, like during last year, we actually couldn't have them, you know, the in-person meetings. And we heard a lot of people say that they really missed them and they enjoyed having them. But I mean, I think the, one of the things we always stressed, you know, in the meetings, once we always try to do a customer highlight, because for all, you know, they're just back there and all they know is they're just handling all these components and putting together parts. And they have no idea what they're, probably even what they do or where they're going to. And so we would always, you know, we part of that all hands meeting was we would focus on a customer or a part that is being made to tell them what that is and what it does, what it goes in. And just to try to establish some connection to it. And, and they, we've seen actually a little improvement in our quality, you know, because that's really kind of one of the things we're trying to show as we show the bottom line and how, you know, being more efficient that we can, that brings improvements to the bottom line. We can do more things with benefits, raises, that type of thing. But with the quality, I mean, like we stress, for example, in Wisconsin, we make a lot of military parts. And so like we can tell them, hey, this part is going on to the new Navy destroyer. Oh, and and I think they take a little pride in that and they understand that and they're paying a little bit more attention to what they're doing, knowing the importance of what that thing is that they're making and where it's going. That's been some of the benefits of it. Well, and it really gives them that feeling that they're part of something bigger than than themselves. No pun intended. <laughs> but, you know, where they're seeing that that pride that this piece, and especially when you're saying it's going on a destroyer, then they're going to make darn sure that it's not their point that their product that fails on that. So it's just these little things. I, I remember a couple of years ago when I spoke for the industrial fastener association that they would one of the guys there said that they had a part of the week and they did the same thing they just took a particular fastener and they showed what the part was and they showed where it went so it's just these little things that you're doing that that's building that connection that like you said it improves quality it improves pride and you're really getting the conversation going by being transparent and letting all the employees what's going on. I'm sure the good, the bad, and the ugly, particularly in this last year. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so what are some of the things that you're finding that are kind of keeping you up at night? We're challenged, obviously, like I'm sure everybody else out there with in in Wisconsin, we're challenged with labor issues. We've had to increase wages to compete with everybody else who is fighting for you know, it seems like the limited work pool that's out there. But again, that's nothing new that, and, and the other thing, you know, supply chain and logistics are major problems. And like everybody else that have really become a day-to-day battles, you know, where we're spending an inordinate amount of time communicating with customers. Um, and a lot of times, not good news, you know, of, of where a part normally is like a two week lead time item is now six to eight weeks. And where sometimes we can't even give a, a lead time or a commit ship date because we don't, we're not getting committed ship dates from our suppliers. So those are, that makes me, you know, as a responsible for our customers, I'm extra vigilant on making sure that they're, because I know how they are. If they need something they, and, I, and I get it, they need it. They're going to go look to see if they can get it somewhere else. 
just trying to make sure that we can secure that those relationships with those customers and, and keeping them updated. So I've, it seems like monthly I send out customer update, a little newsletter of what's going on and updating them what's, what's going on with our, what the challenges are that we're facing with our supply chain and with logistics and, you know, that we're doing the best we can to meet their commit dates. And, but it's really about keeping those, that line of communication open and let them know that, Hey, we didn't all of a sudden just lose the recipe and can't make parts, you know, in a timely fashion. So that's been a real challenge. And then just, you know, maintaining customers or our uh, employees kind of talked about some things we're doing with that. Well, and with the newsletter, that's such an interesting idea because it does give a, a bit of communication and transparency and probably not something that your competitors are doing that, you know, at least they always know where they stand with you. They might not necessarily like it, but the point is that they know. So what are some of the things that you communicate? You said that you, you're communicating timelines and stuff, but what are some of the what are some of the other things that you're putting in that? And then what has been, have you gotten any feedback from your customers after sending that out? Well, I'll also include in there. So for example, if we get new, a new piece of equipment. So for example, we got, you know, an automated welding system, which we put into our Mexico plan. So I will talk about that and how that's used and what the benefits of that will be to our plant efficiency and quality, that type of thing. Also, if we launch a new product line, so if we introduce a new product, I mean, a lot of the stuff we do is custom, but we do have some standard offerings. So, but if we do bring on some new stuff, I'll talk about that in the newsletter. Certifications. So for example, um, if we qualify for a new mill spec or any of those UL, CSA type thing, product lines, you know, we'll inform them that this product line is now updated with this certificate. Hmm. And it also kind of gets your customers out of the saying, I didn't know you did that because right. now you're letting them know all the different ways that you can help them instead of just the probably one product that they had been ordering from you before they knew the other things that you offer. Exactly. And that, that is one of the benefits we've seen is where, where somebody has come back because they're just, you know, we may have been making, one or two custom parts for them. And also they come back and go, Oh, I didn't know you guys did this, you know? And, and so it's, it's helped. And that's, that's an important piece also because uh, you know, during the pandemic, it's really restricted, you know, the ability to go meet and see customers and th that part of <laughs> the business. And I don't know whether that's ever going to come back. I mean, it, it had become increasingly more challenge over the last decade or so, you know, with the use of the internet and everything and, you know, where you, you just can't walk in and cold call people or walk into the offices. And, and now with, you know, the COVID and all that, it just makes it even more, you know, challenging. So the newsletter and, you know, we're also using a lot of um, email uh, communications, you know, to, to customers, to, just communicate to them, use that as our primary lead generation tool and let them know what we're doing and seeing if there's anything that we can do for them. And how often does that go out? We're, we just started it about three, four months ago is when we started it. And we're, we're starting, we're like monthly at this point. And it, it varies. We have different programs. So we have certain target accounts or different market sectors that we'll go after. And depending on those, sometimes they may be every couple of weeks, that fine balance of being an irritant and Right. being informative, but to our general customers, it's, it's, it's monthly. Yeah. And it sounds like a great idea, particularly if along the way you started highlighting different customers or customer of the month or product use of the month or something, because I know with newsletters that I've seen, if, if there are people or companies that are mentioned in there, it's like, that's what they did. I, was I mentioned this month? Was I mentioned this month? Because, yep. you know, we all like to see our name up in yep. lights. So. Yep. 
Yeah, I do. You know, and we'll do a similar one. We use contract reps and we'll do a quarterly newsletter with the contract reps. I'll do the same thing. I'll feature a new six sales success, you know, with a person and all that. Right. Cause I, all the sales guys want to see their name in print. Right. So I'll list all the new customers and, you know, new reps or if they've done something, anything particularly that's standout ish. Well, you know, we'll talk about that in there. And, but you're absolutely right. People always want to see their name in print or in some sort of media. Right. And I think that that's such, again, if you're looking for ways to engage employees and those different tools, having some kind of intra-company newsletter as well, where you're uh, highlighting successes and highlighting the, the mission of the company, the different products that you have, whatever it is, because it's a great tool to keep in touch with your customers, but it's also a great tool to, to share information along with the, the meetings that you're doing and just looking for ways to create those relationships to happen. Because as you mentioned, we're all fighting for the same people to come and join our firm. So it, when you have good employees to create that type of culture that they don't want to leave, that they're not going to go down the street for you know, 50 cents more an hour because they feel connected and they're enjoying what they're doing and, and feel that they're a part of something bigger. Right. Yeah. So if you were to think about from a networking standpoint, what would be some of the things that you would potentially like to learn from other manufacturers and what would you be willing to share with uh, your expertise with other manufacturing colleagues? I, I read a lot about, you know, the automating, you know, and everybody, they talk about automating, you know, to get over the labor challenge that we're all facing and replacing it with automation, which deep down really nobody wants to do, right? You don't want to replace these jobs with, with machines, but at the end of the day, it, it's inevitable that you may have to be a viable organization. So I, I'm interested to know like what other people, manufacturers are doing in, in long the ter- lines of automation. <clears throat> and, you know, have they been aggressively going after it? You know, there's a big show coming up in Chicago in a couple of weeks, Fabtech, where it's just, you go there and it's like a playground of automated equipment. Yep. I love it. I'm speaking there. So I'm very excited about going there. Oh, yeah. So we go every year, we'll go and we'll walk the floor. I'll go down there with our VP of operations. We go through and, uh, you know, kind of look at all the different type of equipment that's there. And and we actually, last time we went, I mean, we actually did buy some equipment, you know, that helped to streamline some of our molded capabilities by automating them it we didn't replace any employees with it but it did it will make a significant contribution to the bottom line because we've just allowed those automate that area which took four employees and we're able to repurpose those employees into other roles i'd be curious to see what other manufacturers what they're doing along that those lines and then similarly, what are they doing, you know, in terms of their marketing and sales activities to, you know, with the challenge of getting in front of customers and the lack of trade shows and the ability to get in to see people, what other tactics may they, are they employing that are successful? And the funny thing is with automation, too, is it does become a recruiting tool Because when you have employees come in and they see some big fancy robot or something or automation, it's like, wow, that's cool. I want to work on that. So it does does have some other positive benefits too from a recruiting standpoint. Yeah, it does. And like I said, even though we we have automated a few different things, you know, the welding line and this molded line, we, we didn't reduce staff in doing so. It's just increased efficiency and allowed us to, you know, focus on those people in other areas. So, but yeah, in, in our industry, especially too, it's like not a lot's changed in the transformer world. You know, I mean, <laughs> at the right. lot of machines are pretty basic, you know, I mean, there are automated winders, multi-spindle machines and all that that are a little bit sexy, but all in all, it's not 
that sexy of an industry, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and and what would be some of the things that you would be willing to share if people wanted to reach out to you? I would be willing to talk about it, you know, the things that we're doing in, in our customer outreach or, or programs that we're doing to keep customers updated or, you know, to try to get new customers. Be happy to talk about any of those activities and or what we're doing internally to try to make our place of employment more desirable for, for people to work and want it to, to, to be here, okay. want them to be here as a, an employee. Okay. So, and as we're getting to the end of our time together, if you had one tip for manufacturers today, as far as working on that culture, the thing that you feel would be the easiest for somebody to start to implement, what would be your best tip? Talk to people, talk to your employees, talk, talk to other people in your industry, other people in the manufacturing field, and just see what they're doing and see, see what's effective. The most important thing you can do is you ask questions and ask what don't they like, or more importantly, what would, what would, would they like to see that can steer you in a lot of different directions and answer a lot of, you know, those questions and help at least get you going in some direction. Okay. Well, Rick, thank you so much for being on the show today. If somebody did want to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Just be shoot me an email at our winter. Just it's our winter like the season at sncmfg.com. Wonderful. Well, again, Rick, thank you so much for your time today. It's been great chatting with you. Thanks, Lisa. I enjoyed it. I'm Lisa Ryan, and this is the Manufacturers Network Podcast. See you next time. Thanks for listening. Hey, do me a favor. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe and give us a five-star rating. Also, feel free to share the podcast with your friends and colleagues so we can grow the network and connect more fantastic folks just like you. You can either go to the website at manufacturers-network.com or share the podcast on your LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or wherever you and your industry friends hang out. The bigger and faster we grow this network, the stronger and deeper community we will have. I appreciate you. Thank you.